Hello and welcome to the channel. Since recording my last video comparing all three generations of Apple Silicon Max chips, I recently picked up a Windows machine, the 2024 Razer Blade 16. And since I had a lot of comments asking for updated real-world use in things like After Effects and Blender on updated macOS software and updated Adobe and Blender software, in addition to how they compare to a high-end Windows machine, I figured I would make an updated comparison video not only between the Apple Silicon, but also adding in the Razer Blade as well. As far as specifications go, each of these machines is the maxed out version of what's available on each category. So as far as the comparison goes, I'll be comparing the best that each manufacturer offers in each generation of machine. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start off this time with After Effects, since that was one of the most popular requests by everyone who commented on the last video. The stress test project that I'm using is available for free on Adobe's website, and I'll include a link in the description below in case you want to download it for yourself and see how your machine compares. I ran the test twice on the Razer machine, once when it was plugged into power and once when it was running on battery and the Apple Silicon machines were just running on battery since there's no difference in performance whether they're plugged in or not. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference between when the Razer was plugged in and when it was running on battery power. In fact, a common theme that you'll see is that the older M1 Max tends to win out as far as benchmarks go when it's compared against the 4090 running on battery. In the After Effects test project, the M1, M2, and M3 Max performed about the same as they did when I first ran the tests when the M3 Max first came out. But the more interesting story here is that the M3 Max barely lost out to the Razer on power, and the M1 Max actually beat the Razer when it was on battery. There is a similar story when Blender is concerned, and as I said in my last video, the M3 Max is definitely capable of handling high-end 3D rendering. That's not to say that the M1 or M2 can't do it, but as you can see from the Blender Classroom render, the M3 Max is only one second slower compared to the 175 watt RTX 4090 in the Razer Blade. The M2 Max isn't far behind and is a pretty close competitor to the M3 and a pretty huge leap in performance when compared to the M1 Max. And even though the Razer on battery beat out the M1 Max, it's far from what I would consider a slaughter. Especially when you consider that the Apple Silicon chips did these renders almost silently while the Razer Blade sounded like it was about to take off into outer space. The Junkyard test mixes things up a little bit with the M3 Max actually beating the Razer while it's plugged in and the M1 Max beating the Razer while it's running on battery. Now that we've seen what the GPU can do, I'll switch over to a CPU heavy application. That is Adobe Dimensions. While rendering on the CPU, there is a bigger difference in the performance between the Razer Blade plugged in on power and the M3 Max showing that there is a closer race between the GPU on these machines than there is on the CPU. The big shocker here though is that the M1 Max is significantly better running on battery than the Razer Blade running on battery as far as CPU rendering is concerned. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I just wanted to make something short and sweet that would show off the performance differences between all of these machines with files and demo projects that were readily available so that if you are thinking about upgrading your machine, you can download those files and see how your current device compares. So my conclusion here is that as far as GPU goes, I would say the Razer Blade is a good option if you're a gamer first and a content creator second, and the MacBook is definitely the way to go if you are a content creator first and do some light gaming. Well, that's all I have for now. I just want to say I really appreciate you stopping by the channel, and as always, thanks for watching.